that's a little radish. We do have some bigger ones out here. Oh, kind of oh that's this. a radish. Oh, that's vetch. Yeah, it's yeah. the one I was looking for. The vetch is what yeah. we're looking at. Oh, they do? You're do oh. I just pulled one out and looked at it. Oh, and you have to dig them up. These sound so big. <laughs> Are they? Did you break one open? Is there any nodules there? No, we're we're looking the at this little thing. plant. Yeah, yeah, that that looks impossible, but it looks like almost a J. Yeah. It's taken just a bit when it hit It's that interesting oh. about the rates at which it takes for plants to come, become biologically active in uh, biologically grown wheat crops. The roots are. 70% colonised by mycorrhizal fungi by the time the wheat plants has got two leaves. In a conventionally grown wheat crop it never ever gets above 20% even at any stage of growth. Mm. So it's a huge difference in the timing of oh. biological activation depending on the system that you're growing things in. What, whether you use, was there any fertiliser? Yeah, yeah, did this not have much. Mm. We just sprayed on. Oh, we did put a little nitrogen 10 on. Pounds. Well, I mean, nitrogen will probably prevent the legumes from yeah. nodulating if you put nitrogen. Break them open. Because if you break them open, they should be like pinkish on the inside. If they're functioning, has anyone got a little knife? They do look a bit pinkish. That's just the colour blades. Oh, this is on this. I think they're on this batch. It's on the batch. That's a nice batch, mate. Is that crown batch or something? What kind of batch is that? Yeah, they look pink inside. Oh, yeah, there we go. Here. So that they're working then. So if you cut the nodule in half and it's not pink on the inside, it's not doing anything. Common. 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 Yeah, and it's coming off in those flat structures like that. But this is doing a, this plant is doing a great job in here. You can see it's actually not going into that section though. Yeah. It's all the roots have proliferated here and they can't actually get in there. They're not exploring that bit. So they'll make they'll do a good job on this bit here. It's a, it's actually quite a narrow. See it's not the roots aren't even going into there. I can just peel that bit away. They're not the plant's not able to explore that hole. This it's quite a, a dense section. You notice that the um the roots on the legume are these ones are, are, are thicker. You know they're um Thicker roots. So grass roots can be really, really fine, so they can get into little spaces more easily. Grasses really will give you structure, but these are the guys that have got the nutrients. So it's a lot, really, for the health of this, of your soil, or and your, your livestock and everything that you're doing. These will be much more minerally dense, not just nitrogen, but they've got a whole lot more trace elements than any riser sheets. These ones would have had riser sheets on them as well. The roots are covered in uh, soil. See, see how the, the roots around the plant. Actually, pass it around and have a look. And they they've got soil all sticking to the to the roots. Uh, that's a called a riser sheath, and that means that there's lots of microbial activity around those roots, which is the glues and the gums that are coming out of the microbes that are making the soil stick to the root. That's what you call a riser sheath. That's a sign that that plant is supporting microbial activity in that soil. And also the fact that it's gone into that really hard, blocky area. Um, and, and they've nodulated and the nodules are pink inside, which means they're working. So that means this, these guys are actively fixing nitrogen, whereas the other little legume that we found... Was it this one? No, that one's nodulated as well. Yeah. This one. No, that one's not a legume. This guy. This one didn't have any nodules, but you can look at the poor thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can tell it's not fixing nitrogen by the colour of it. Okay. So every time, if, like green, the colour green is chlorophyll, which is a pigment, and it's part of a protein complex. And that's why if, if that pigment doesn't have enough nitrogen in it, that's why the plant is that yellowish colour rather than being green. But you'll never ever see a nitrogen deficient plant, I never have in my life ever seen a nitrogen deficient plant like this in a natural ecosystem. Never. Doesn't matter where in the world you go, I've never seen a nitrogen deficient plant in a natural ecosystem. I only ever see them in farmed fields. So that tells us something about the way, we, what we've done to the soil. We've created nitrogen deficiency. 
You don't need legumes to fix nitrogen. You, everything can fix nitrogen. Everything that's green is associated with bacteria that are fixing nitrogen. So these guys, this has associated. Uh, in those riser sheets there, it says nitrogen being fixed all, all the way along those roots. Uh, so the nodules can be just like even that little aggregate there that's attached to that root, there's probably nitrogen being fixed inside there. So the conditions that you need to fix nitrogen are a carbon source. So this plant's photosynthesizing and channeling carbon to its roots, the same as this one. Those bacteria that live inside the... What happened to our nodules? Anyway, the bacteria that live inside those nodules, they're all receiving their, carb, their energy from the sun and it's being fixed in photosynthesis by that plant. So it's making sugar in its leaves, channeling the sugar down into those nodules and the bacteria that are living inside those nodules get their food from this plant. But they're inside that environment there because it's a moister environment, which they also need. And it's a low oxygen environment because you can't fix nitrogen in the presence of oxygen. So they're in a protected environment that's low in oxygen, high in moisture and high in sugar. Exactly the same thing's happening on the riser sheet of this, this uh, air. Like there should be as much air in there as there is soil in there. 50% of it should be spaces and 50% of it um, solid materials. So a good soil is actually 50% space rather than, than soil. And the way you get the spaces obviously is to, is to get the aggregates. So the more and more of these little aggregates that you get, then the more spaces there'll be between aggregates. The only thing that can build soil is a plant. So whenever you have bare ground, it's going to deteriorate and it's going to lose structure because these little aggregates are held together with um, carbon compounds and held together with the, uh, the glues and gums that come out of your bacteria and your fungi and there's fungal hyphae and all kinds of like it's life that it, it's actually life that turns this um, an oat field that had a lot of synthetic fertilizer on it pull the plants out you will not see those riser sheets it's not the plant it's the management Okay. Yeah, it's not the species, it's the management. It's the management. Yeah. Um, but okay. Sierra asked a question, so I'll just um, take that if I can to help answer that question. Sierra said, why is it that if, I, if we apply synthetic nitrogen to this, that it won't do this nitrogen fixing that it's obviously doing? I mean, it's got green leaves. I mean, it's, it's not as green as it could be, but it's green. Uh, so where did this get its nitrogen from, if it hasn't? How much nitrogen is in the air as a percentage? 70%, yeah, 78%, 79%, or 78% will say how much oxygen is in the air as a percentage? 17 or 18. 20. <laughs> 23. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was 17 or 18. <laughs> Eight. How much carbon dioxide is in the air as a percentage? 0.02. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get multiple choice? <laughs> <laughs> Tick the box. Okay. Well, there's about 21% oxygen and 78% nitrogen. And what are they? CO2, Clark was correct, 0.04% CO2. Okay, this whole plant has been built from photosynthesis from it fixing CO2. 0.04%. It's a trace gas. But it has, in order to build itself, it also needs, needs to get nitrogen from somewhere. And there isn't a plant on the planet that can obtain nitrogen from the air, even though it's nearly 80% nitrogen. These guys are getting their nitrogen from those bacteria that are living inside the nodules. So bacteria can fix nitrogen, but plants can't. Now, if there's 78% nitrogen in the air, and I'm going to do this in metric because I've got no idea how it works in pounds and whatever, but I'm sure you'll get it. We take one square metre, which is pretty close to one square yard, and we look at the column of atmosphere above that one square metre. And this is in tonnes. Have you got any idea how many tonnes of atmosphere, if we go from here right to the top of the atmosphere, how many tonnes of atmosphere are in above one square metre? Mm. Any idea? Luckily it's a gas, because otherwise... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a really easy number. Pick a really easy number yeah, to nine? multiply things by. <laughs> well, it's nearly as easy as 110, yeah, okay. Okay. There's 10 tonnes, it's the definition of, in metric terms, one atmosphere is 10 tonnes. Uh, so there's 10 tonnes of atmosphere, uh, as I said, lucky it's a gas, so gas means the molecules are all moving in different directions so we don't feel the weight of it. 10 tonnes of atmosphere above one square metre, and again metric, there's 10,000 square metres in one hectare. So if there's 10,000 square metres in a hectare 
Oh, so we've got to just go back one step. 10 tonnes at 78% nitrogen. Mm -hmm. How many tonnes of nitrogen are sitting above one square metre? Which is close to one square yard. 7.8 tonnes. Oh, well done. I'm getting back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting back. Right. <laughs> there are 7.8 tonnes of nitrogen sitting here. Okay. Over a hectare, there's 78,000 tonnes. So over an acre, it's like half of that. All that tons and tons and tons of nitrogen, okay? But we go out and buy it. And I mean, if you think about it, <laughs> we've only been able to buy it for the last 50 years or so. So for thousands of years, we've, un we've grown plants and grown food and plants have existed with or without humans. And they've been green. Like I said, we've only had, you only see nitrogen deficient plants now in the way we're farming now. And they've been green because they have these associations with bacteria that can fix nitrogen. Doesn't matter whether it's a grass, whether it's a tree in a rainforest or something that's growing on the side of the road, a weed, whatever it is, it's living in association with bacteria that can fix nitrogen. What happens if we apply nitrogen? That was Sierra's question. Sorry, this is a long answer to your short question, Sierra. If we apply it, in order to stimulate the bacteria in that riser sheath that are fixing nitrogen for this oat plant, it has to feed them on carbon. As it's doing that, it's actually building soil. This stuff that's, this sticky stuff that's on the outside of this, this root, if I peel this off and look at this, this is, this is new topsoil, okay? This is your beautiful, this is what's gonna give you, this is not gonna be that blocky stuff. This is formed of a whole lot of, it's just broken up actually quite nicely for me into little round, little lumps, okay? Lovely little aggregates. See those, they almost look like seeds. See how it's in those little round circles? Well, those little round circles there, that's where the, they're like those the little nodules. They're almost exactly the same things going on in there as what's going on in the nodules on your, on your legume. And these can join together and form bigger aggregates and they can end up the size of like a pea or something like that. That plant is putting carbon into that to make those nodules. If we supply the nitrogen, it doesn't need to communicate with bacteria to fix the nitrogen, so it stops putting the carbon into the soil or into these riser sheaths or into the aggregates. It stops doing that and then it stops building soil, so the soil deteriorates. So if we use synthetic nitrogen, we're going to end up with soil that's got poorer structure because the plants will not have riser sheaths. You pull a uh, an oat plant out of a heavily fertilised field and it'll have, if I pull all these off without breaking the roots, it will have beautiful clean roots like, well not beautiful, horrible clean roots. <laughs> <laughs> it will have clean roots. I've got lots of photos of this. You'll see clean roots like that and that's not what you want to see. I mean I broke the stuff off the roots before. When I, if you pull a plant out, out of a field, a crop plant, and the roots come out looking like that, You've got no biological activity happening at all. 